Once I found a nice location, I cleared any sticks away from the ground that might get in the way. Then I arranged some sticks in order to support a good strong ridge pole. This pole is about four feet off the ground. At the other end, a good strong Y will be the main support. A couple of sticks should be added near the Y for extra support so the pole doesn't fall over. Then you can lean vertical poles along each side for the ribs of each wall. Try to avoid weak or rotten branches for this. And now the other side. The next layer will be smaller stuff woven over the ribs to create a nice mesh. If you do this right, there shouldn't be many holes much bigger than your fists. Now you can start piling on the insulation. Broad leaves such as maple, beech, and oak work great for this, but pine needles and dry grass work great too. In this case I'm using maple leaves mixed with small twigs that happen to be lying on the ground. I like to pile on as much insulation as I can and stuff extra into any gaps. The goal here is to make a layer that will contain your body heat and keep you warm through the night without a fire. When you are done with this layer, you shouldn't be able to see much light coming through the walls when you're inside. Here I use the same techniques to tighten up the doorway. Now we have to waterproof this thing in case it rains. I found a few windfalls for this so I didn't have to cut anything down. Sometimes you have to drag these things from a little ways away. I like to take spruce and fir boughs for this, but other things like pine boughs, bark, and dry grass will work too. These boughs will direct the water to the ground while keeping your house from getting wet. They also keep the leaves from blowing away and they give your house a nice green color. Here I'm using an axe to pick the branches off another windfall, but a good knife or a rock can work well too.
So I finished this hut after seven hours of work and then spent the night in it. So good luck and thanks for watching.